because I know so many of you would love to know what it's like to train with Matt Sheldon or become elite. What's going on Team Tweety? I hope you're all super well. It's about 9.30 in the morning for me and I'm heading off to my first sprint session in a couple of weeks. And I probably need it since I lost to Matt. Yeah, that one still hurts a little bit, but you know what probably hurts more is his football tennis loss because man, oh man, he was a little bit salty about that one. So I'm driving off there now. I'm really looking forward to it because it's something I haven't done in a while. If we do fitness, mm, yeah, I'm not really looking forward to that. But like I always say, this stuff, you gotta get it done. As much as you may not enjoy it, it's gotta be done. So we're also gonna pick up Reg, see how he's going. So let's jump to that. Yo, Reg. How you going, mate? Not too bad, how are you? Are you still upset about that loss? I don't <laughs> Do you wanna get back out of the car? Okay. Walk. Fair. <laughs> Just quickly guys, if you want all the stats and lineups for the upcoming World Cup Finals, make sure you click the link below, download OneFootball, absolutely amazing app, I can't stress enough, I use it all the time. Link in description, make sure you check it out. I finished my sprint training and we did some fitness at the end, but I decided not to do it. I've gone to the park for a couple of hours each day, the last three days. I've also got training tonight, so I've got to be careful that I don't overtrain. Now in saying that, the sprinting that we did today did have a degree of fitness in it, but it wasn't too bad. It did work me, which is good. Now I'm hitting up lunch in there. I got chicken and rice. You guys are seeing how much I'm having. Two pieces of toast as well. Today I was training with Reg, of course, who was there, and then there were two other rugby guys, three sprinters as well. So it was a mixed bunch. And I was speaking with the rugby guys and one of them had to put on a lot of weight. And the more and more that I talk to these people who need to add mass and power to their body, it just comes down to how much food they're eating. So I'm really trying to put an emphasis on that myself, just getting as many calories in as possible. I'm almost at the point of, I just need to be having whatever as much as possible. You know, there's always these things, you need to have the right foods, you need to have the right this. I remember one time a nutritionist came and spoke to us and this is a thing called Milo. It's kind of like a chocolatey drink sort of thing. And the nutritionist said that with breakfast, one of the NRL players, which is like rugby players, so they need to be big. They just added a glass of Milo to their breakfast just to get more calories in. So there's a few things like that I'm doing, like two pieces of toast. This would probably be enough in itself, but I just need to smash out as many calories as possible. And it's not fun, I'm telling you, I don't want to eat all this. I kind of just want to have a nice meal, enjoy it, but yeah, this is going to be force feeding. So this is what it takes as well. It's not just all on the field, it's not all on the ball. I need to build mass. And I want to get into a little bit of what it was like to train with Matt in a team environment, because I think that was so interesting, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Well, I ate all of that food. Now I'm off to another coaching session, man. It's a full on day for me. But you know, the most important thing is I'm doing what I love. I'm around football. It's so, so important. I'd much rather do this than work at like, I don't know, a supermarket or something. I don't know about you guys, but I love football. I want to be around it all the time. So no footage of this session. I'll catch you guys in about an hour once I get back home. So I've finished that coaching session. I've actually set up a board here for a list of goals for the program. I'll quickly run you through it. I think I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'll try to release it staggered. So you're passing. I want 30 duo drills, 30 solo drills. That's should be out on the 15th of July as an aim. I don't know if I'm gonna hit that. And then dribbling, 50 solo, first touch, 30 duo, 30 solo. Skills, I want 40 to 50 skill moves, probably more than that if I can. Ball mastery, 30 to 40, and then football sprints for the, all the positions. My, oh my, it keeps getting worse for me, but I've just found out that I've deleted a ton of stuff from my computer. So I put my desktop from my actual desktop onto my hard drive because I was running out of space. Anyway, I deleted that the other day and I probably deleted about 30 to 40 pages of the program that I'm building here. So that's a lot of work gone. And on top of that, I also just realized I deleted all of the hashtag Ask Tweety questions. The ones that watch hashtag Ask Tweety, you know how valuable that document is. It has all your questions stored on it and now it's gone. So please send me in your questions, whether it's on this video or the last Ask Tweety. Oh, I'm so annoyed, man. But yeah, I put a whiteboard here with the list of goals for the program. I'm hoping to get it out mid-August. I have no idea if that's even going to be possible. There is so much work that needs to go into it because there's just so much value in it. But we'll see. Obviously, I'm prioritizing my soccer, and if I feel like this is getting in the way, then I'll stop. But if anything, it's helping me because I go down to the park, 
for two hours. I work. I'm doing these drills. I'm getting better and better myself. And I also get to help you guys as well. So look forward to this one. Oh, it's going to be good. So I've been thinking about making this sort of video for a while, ever since I trained with Matt's team, because I know so many of you would love to know what it's like to train with Matt Sheldon or become elite. If you don't know him, link will be in the description. But on top of that, this is a professional footballer who's in a semi-professional environment. Not all of us are going to experience the professional game. Some of us will, the ones that work hard, the ones that put in the grind, and those who are good enough will get that and experience that professional level. Now it's really interesting to compare what it was like to train with a semi-pro player and a professional player inside the same environment. Someone who is definitely up to that pro standard but couldn't get there for certain reasons. Matt's reason being he was injured and it just simply didn't work out for him. So there's a couple of things I want to touch on. The first one being is strength. We all know Matt is a power athlete. If you look at his body, he just is like a machine. And what I'd really noticed is in the two sessions I trained with him, at least once in both of them, he would push someone off the ball. It wouldn't be one of those ones where it's shoulder to shoulder and he really goes in and gives the guy a shoulder. It was almost like he would just get his arm up and push like that and the other one falls over. He did that twice in two sessions. And I look at that, I think he weighs, oh, I forget how much, but maybe 74 is my guess. And he's a little bit taller than me. And I looked at that and went, my goodness, this guy is an absolute beast. He is strong and able to push players off the ball. He is able to hold his own. So that's the biggest difference I noticed between the pro and the semi-pros. Absolute strength, he works on his body, he makes sure that he is up to that professional level. So when I saw this massive difference, I took that and went, okay, Matt's extremely strong, what if I was like that? That's why I'm talking a lot about the food I'm eating. That's why I'm trying to go to the gym more. I saw that and it, it was like a spark for me. I don't know if you guys have read, there's a book called Malcolm Gladwell Outliers and I think it's in that book, I can't quite remember, but there's a spark and in that spark what happens is it just goes, well, that's the, the answer. Or it's that spark that makes you just change something. And I saw that and I went, man, I wanna be able to do that. And look, Matt's a mate, so I don't like giving him an absolute rap and I, he's probably gonna watch this video. So Matt, you are a strong guy. Don't let my compliments go to your head. But yeah, it's absolutely sick to see that absolute raw power. So on top of that, the other thing that I really noticed was his approach to training sessions. When you're a professional, you go into everything with a purpose. You don't just go to training, go through the motions, get the drills done and then go home. And this is slightly different because he's a bit older. His body can't go straight into a sprint or a straight into a drill, unlike mine. So that means that he has to do the prehab. And man, he's not slack with it. He'll go to the training session, be there early and make sure that he gets the prehab in. It probably does it 10, 15 minutes and then we work. From there, we always went into passing. So we would be passing firm to each other, testing. So before training, I see a lot of players who, you know, muck around during the warm up, juggle the ball, kick it about with each other, try and muck around. We would get a ball between each other and just one touch, trying to mess each other up so that we can improve ourselves. So we're doing it with an actual purpose. So the approach to training session, the mindset is something that really stuck with me as well. When you're a pro and at that top level, I guess it kind of sticks with you. When he's at St. Louis or any other USL team, he's there and his spot is on the line. So if he's not performing at training or games or anything else, his spot and his job is on the line. So approach your training sessions like you would a game. And if you're not approaching your games the best, you need to improve that. And that doesn't mean going and doing 15 minutes prehab. That's Matt. Matt needed to do that for his body. I could go straight into a training session and start running and dribbling and doing this, but it's just those little things that make the difference. And to finish off, the last thing that I really noticed was his confidence on the ball. When he had the ball, he had a direct purpose with what he wanted to do. And I can guarantee you that came down to the hours he spent on the pitch. Confidence in your ability is something that you attain by putting in hours of work. I would never be confident to go out and play tennis against Roger Federer because I'm not at that level. But a professional like Matt has put in the hours and dropping down to a semi-professional team, he still approaches it like it's a professional team, like he would any other session. So by putting in those hours, just grinding away on the training field by himself, grinding away, 
during pro training sessions. That's what allows him to build this confidence up so when he gets on the field, he knows exactly what he wants to do. And during these sessions, I wasn't so much involved because I wasn't part of the actual team. So I was able to stand back a little bit, watch Matt, look at these sort of things and analyze the difference between the semi-pro player and the professional player. But yeah, so interesting. Try and take these tips into your training sessions if you wanna become a better player. Just small little things that you can do to make sure that you become a better player and have the chance to become a pro. And when you think about it, what I've just said, the three points, weight, well, muscle and power, the mentality going into training sessions and the hard work to build that confidence on the ball, those are all things that anyone can attain. You just need to be someone that is willing to put in the hours, purposefully practicing your craft to ensure that you're improving. Yep, this is my little thing on Matt. This is kind of for everyone, Matt. You're watching, bro. You know, I still put you down a peg or two. I'm still the football tennis champion. And Matt, you know, you might wanna hold the sprinting to me forever. I will get you one day, once I put on the mask, the power. But the football tennis, it's the title, the football aspect of football. I won. Unfortunate for you, but yeah, that's my insider map. Let's continue the day. Off to training now, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. This will be my first session with my team in about two weeks now. Because last week I was obviously training with Matt's team, which was absolutely great. But yeah, I'm just so stoked to be able to get out on the field in a team environment, not like jet lag and feeling like it's about midnight. So off we go to this session that I'm heading over to Lucy's place, having dinner there. I think it's pasta or something. So I'll probably end up catching you guys while I'm having dinner or something along those lines. So I cannot wait to get out on that field. You know you get those days where you're just absolutely feeling it. You're feeling getting out and playing. You're feeling like training. That's how I'm feeling right now. So let's head down there again. No footage. I'm sorry. I can't do anything about it. But off we go. Back from training, we started off with a passing drill and then moved into a shape game, working on our shape for the match on the weekend. And then we finished off with a 45 minute game. So I'm pretty happy that I didn't do the fitness today. Otherwise I would have been absolutely killed for that match tonight. Now, I'm sorry I didn't show you dinner, but it was some sort of pasta bake with tuna. I had a fair bit of that, two pieces of toast on top of that with veggies as well really focusing on getting as many calories in as possible. Unfortunately, I'm not having this smoothie tonight. No three raw eggs. Yeah, it's upsetting, but you know, we just gotta push on, don't we? I'm gonna end the vlog there, head off to bed, and then I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Got some coaching, filming some drills, and some other stuff as well. So, Team Tweety, I'm signing out. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you're to join Johnny Austin Ministry. Bye. Listen, listen.